Steve, from reading your bio on your site or an article about you, I understand that you taught improv back in the 70s <laughs> in prisons. You received a grant? Uh, yeah, I was, um, uh, I was part of a company. I was very young back in the 70s, <laughs> obviously. And uh, so I was part of a group called Wings. And uh, this was a group that had gotten a grant to go to prisons in Virginia and uh, with the idea of teaching them improv. Um, and it was kind of a, a great, um, slightly misguided effort, but it was, it was really wonderful. I mean, we went into a medium uh, security prison, a women's prison, and a maximum security prison. And we met amazing people. And the, and the amazing thing is, is those guys were better improvisers than we were. We would come in and do a show, you know, like a little scene from an adaptation of Chekhov's the, you know, the the marriage proposal, or a, a scene from the musical, you know, Adam, you know, um, the apple tree, you know, uh, where I played Adam. And then after we did that, uh, then we would grab a, a couple of uh, about ten or twelve inmates, and we would teach them. Uh, a series of, of improv lessons, usually lasting about a month and a half, and then we would go off to another prison. And uh, this one place that we went to, I understand that they formed a group that kept on performing years after we left. Uh, but the, the weird thing is, is that here were, all the, here were these four middle class, you know, you, know, you know, up with America kind of group, and uh, we, I don't think we had ever um, encountered people like that, uh, you know, and uh, there was this one guy, you know, he was, he was called Smiley, and uh, Smiley would have this big grin, and, uh, you know, you're there with them for, for weeks, and so somebody asked him, so what'd you do to get here? And he said, well, I would walk into, you know, Burger King, and I would say, you know, give me a Big Mac and sing the song, and we'd go, Sing the song. Yeah, sing the song. And then they would say, well, we're not going to sing the song. Uh, then he would pull out this huge revolver. Um, and he would say, sing the song. And then he would make them sing, you know, special lotus, no, 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 whatever the song was. Uh, and uh, then he would rob them. <laughs> and he was eventually caught. Uh, there was another guy who had this picture of this woman. And he said, what do you think of her? And uh, we would say, well, she's pretty. Yeah, that's my wife. I killed her. You know, it was, it was surreal. And the, the one thing that I got out of that is I don't know those people. I, I don't know how they live. I don't, I, I, rather than, oh, I'm, I've been in prisons for a couple of days and I know exactly everything there is to know about this subculture. And I, I left with the appreciation that there's so, so much about so many people that I know nothing about. Uh, at least having the respect of knowing what I don't know. Um, but it was a great training uh, period for me. It was a great um, uh, learning experience. And I took the experience I learned doing improv, teaching improv, and I used that a couple of years later to open a theater company in New York called Manhattan Punchline, where, where I started teaching improv, not to, not to prisoners, just to actors.